How does that feel to be leading the league? And, you, know, you, you know, the work's working. You know, just being able to know that I'm always going to be around the rim, always going to try to finish this, no matter if that's hooks, dump offs, dunks, lobs, just doing whatever it takes to do the dirty work to clean up everything. And anything that surprised you these first two games in the NBA? Uh, I wouldn't say anything would surprise me. You know, I feel like the league, the NBA definitely has like a higher tempo, a higher speed when it comes to the like the style of play. But you know, that's what I've been looking for. I feel like I'll be able to fit that very well and just trying to build off that. They, they wanted you to stay out of foul trouble and all that. How, how's that working out? Just got to be able to know that, you know, if I'm switching onto a guard, you know, I got to be able to know I'm defending with my feet, not my hands. Being able to know I'm not trying to reach out, trying to steal. Or I got to be able to know what type of defensive posture I got to take. And at the same time, being able to know like, help when not to help when the, the three second call being able to be in and out of the two nine just being able to just try to adapt to the game as quick as possible part of that adaptation is that in the, in the nba uh opposing coaches will use drastically different lineups and then last night they ran in a smaller lineup what's the biggest adjustment is you know, for you on that, when smaller lineups are out there? Well, usually I'm always low. Just being able to know that I have my defender behind me is in, in a dunker or running up a set of screen. But now my defender was all, out, all the way out in the wing. So it just kind of has a, I'm, I'm in a different stance. I'm in a different positioning. Uh, it's harder for me to protect the rim and still be, out, be able to get out and X out of my man or X out to the wing. So we're just going to be able to just take reps and repetition to be able to get it down. And obviously, uh, you know, Dwight came in mm -hmm. and that lineup was effective. Did you learn anything from watching Dwight? Yeah, just Dwight's, uh, he was always poised. You know, he's always trying to put himself in the right positioning for people to be able to know that they have to honor him while not being able to, you know, step to Kyrie and Luca. And I feel like he did an amazing job. And, you know, I was asking him after about a few things, so just being able to try to pick his brain. Eli, your connection with Luca and Kyrie is obviously strong to two games. Could you talk about your bond with them and how you've grown as a player and their fit with them as well? Uh, it really just comes down to repetition. You know, we've been able to be practicing for a couple weeks now, being able to know their timing, what they like to do, what they don't like to do, and just being able to just get them out of a pinch. You know, if they're if they're getting doubled, I got a flash, and if someone goes under on the screen, I'm a rescreen so that they can get back on back downhill to get to the rim or get to the shot that they need to. Just being able to understand their games is really what's going to come what's going to come down to by the end of the year. What's the biggest difference when you're playing with both of them? Uh, you know, Kyrie's, Kyrie's definitely going to hit me a lot more pocket passes, and Kyrie's game is a little bit more quicker, but you just got to be able to just match Luca's tempo, which is kind of different. You know, he's a slow player, but he's going to be able to get downhill and get to a position. You just got to be ready for the ball. Uh, you did more switching yesterday with facing a smaller lineup, and you, you seemed to fare pretty well. Uh, what has helped you succeed in those situations so far as you adjust to them? Just being able to know I got to move my feet, you know, it really comes down to just staying low, not getting caught standing up and you always have my head on the swivel. You know, there's a lot of people who's going to do whenever they small lineups, they're going to pick and pop. They're going to try to uh, go screen and they're going to try to throw a lot of different actions at me because I'm new. But I always got to stay on my toes and be able to re be able to be ready to talk to my teammates and be able to just try to help my defenders out. I guess if you look at it like a center by committee game one, you, between you and Maxi, you guys had 22 points and 17 rebounds last night. It was 20 points and nine rebounds. How's that working out? Just being able to, you know, we're a one-two punch. You know, there's sometimes we're going to be in the game together and there's just sometimes we're going to be subbing for each other. So just being able to know that whenever we come into the game, we got to bring up our pressure, we got to bring up our intensity, and we got to do a lot of more things that the guards can't do down low. So we got to clean things up down low, and that's our job. One of the things about adjusting to the NBA, at least I would think as a young player, is the, you're stepping onto such a much of a bigger stage. Sure. So I wondered, like, what you noticed, uh, like, your play in San Antonio went viral. I mean, people were all over social media going crazy about your play. And then same same thing last night with Lucas' shot. Mm -hmm. Anything that you've really has jumped out at you about being part of that? I mean, it's the biggest stage. You know, you got to have through, it's a field arena almost every time you play basketball. So you got to be able to know that you can't make as many. You got to make as little mistakes as possible. You got to be on your edges at all times. You got to be ready for whenever your names, whenever your numbers called. You got to be ready for everything that they throw at you because you know they're out there. They know you. They know what you like to do. They know what you don't like to do. So they're going to try to game plan for you. So you got to be able to anticipate that and be ready for that. Did you notice the fan reaction to your play? Uh, no, not really. Uh, which or what others were saying about your play? In San Antonio? Yeah. Uh, you know, I really try to stay off of like social media comments because you know, they're going to see me do something well and they're going to praise me and as soon as I do something wrong, they're going to hate me. So we're just going to be able to know that. You know, I'm going I'm to do whatever I need to do and that's my job to finish plays and 
and that's what I could do for sure. Uh, you've probably heard a lot about Luca. Uh, what did you think of that shot last night? Uh, Luca magic, you know, it's real. It's, it's definitely real. We've seen a lot of crazy shots in practice, but you know that one, that one probably takes the cake so far. So you got to be able to know that. And in the game situations, you're gonna he's gonna do his blue magic, and you got to be able to be either clean it up or cheer him on whenever he makes it. What kind of reaction you got from Tyson in his first two games? Uh, you know, he's always just he's praising me, but he's also making sure that he's he's on every mistake that I possibly can make. You know, he's uh, always trying to teach me what's the right positioning, what's the right footwork, what's the right timing, and just being able to just try to do like the little key things. Because you know, if I see someone going to double one of the one of our main guards, they got to be able to flash. But at the same time, if I see one of my guards posting up and he's about to shoot it, I got to get into position to box out earlier rather than seeing the shot go up and then box out. So it's being able to just time uh, reading, mm, reading the ball, its defender, and then two other people. It's just something I'm just trying to be able to just expand on because that's going to make my life easier and my job easier. What are you anticipating from Memphis? You don't have to worry about leaving out. Uh, you know, I feel like they're they're a really good team. You know, they have a lot of shooters. They have a lot of ability to get up the rim, and I feel like they have a lot of physicality. So you got to be able to game plan for that. You got to be able to game plan for being able to just help off my man and still be able to get back so I can so he doesn't get to where he needs to do. So when teams go small, what is most important for you offensively? We talked about defensively, but what, what do you think about offensively? In those you know, I feel like whenever teams go small, that means you're going to switch a lot more. So you'll be able to, you know, pick and slip. Whenever I'm setting picks, i got to slip out of them quicker. And being able to just space. You know, there's going to be times where I'm going to duck down low, open up and seal. But if they're not going to hit me, i got to hit to the dunker and be able to be ready for either the offensive board or dump off for a lot. You talked about the on the court things that you've been working with Tyson on. What's been his biggest advice to you off the court? You know, it's a long season. You know, you got to be able to just make sure that you're you're locked in the entire time. You know, there's going to be a lot of voices talking to you. There's going to be a lot of people trying to reach out, trying to make you do things, trying to make you appear in different places. But you got to be able to make sure that you're doing your number one job, and that's being able to focus on what you're doing on the court and get better. And that's what we've been trying to do, and that's what we're focusing on. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Josh. Thanks.